good morning everyone welcome to concepts up in this video we'll discuss the indian polity related questions which are important for public service commission exams let's start so who presides over the sitting of the house of people and the options are the president the vice president the chief justice of india and the speaker so who presides over the sitting of house of people to answer this we need to know what is house of people called so house of people is nothing but lok sabha or lower house lok sabha or lower house so if you know this one okay you can answer this one so who will preside over the lok sabha or lower house of the parliament it is speaker it is speaker so answer is the speaker and under article 93 of the indian constitution okay under article 93 of the indian constitution deals with the election of speaker and deputy speaker of the lok sabha or lower house or house of people next how many languages are recognized in the 8th schedule of indian constitution remember this one so there is a possibility of asking under which schedule under which schedule okay so it is 8th schedule under Eighth schedule. How many languages are recognized? Options are fourteen, twenty-two, sixteen, and twenty. So under eighth schedule, how many languages are recognized? Twenty-two. So the answer is twenty-two. And we'll see what are those twenty-two languages: Assamese, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Konkani, Malayalam, Manipuri, Marathi, Nepali, Odia, Punjabi, Sanskrit. Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu, Bodo, Santali, Mithali, and Dongri. These are the twenty-two languages, okay, which are recognized in the eighth schedule of the Indian Constitution. And now we'll see some more about those languages. So, most spoken language in India. So, most spoken language in India. So, as we already know that Hindi is the most spoken language, and after Hindi, it is Bengali. Okay, which stands second after Hindi, and it is followed by Marathi, and it is followed by Telugu, it is followed by Tamil. So first Hindi, second Tamil, third Marathi, and fourth Telugu, and the fifth is Tamil. So the term fraternity, the term fraternity in the preamble of the Indian Constitution means a sense of means a sense of what and the options are brotherhood friendliness statehood and love and affection so the term fraternity means brotherhood and the answer is brotherhood so if you see the preamble of our constitution this fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation is written on it so which of the following authorities which of the following authorities is or competent to issue issue writ for the enforcement of fundamental rights this is very important so the options are parliament president supreme court supreme court and high court so who will issue the writ for the enforcement of fundamental rights and the answer is supreme court and high court supreme court and high court we'll see okay the answer is supreme court and high court so what is writ writ is nothing but a formal order it is a formal order issued by a body with administrative or judicial jurisdiction so the supreme court issues the supreme court issues writ under which article article 32 of the indian constitution okay the supreme court issues writ under Article thirty-two and the High Court issues the writ under Article two twenty-six. There are five types of writs in the Indian Constitution. Those are habeas corpus, mandamus, certiorari, quo warranto, and prohibition. So these are the five. What are this? We'll discuss detail in the next video. And this. writ is borrowed okay and this writ is borrowed from the british constitution and 
British call it as perogrito urate. Under the Scheduled Tribe and other traditional forest dwellers, a recognition of Forest Rights Act 2006, who shall be the authority to initiate the process for determining the nature and extent of individual or community forest rights or both. And the options are the State Forest Department, District Collector or Deputy Commissioner, Tahsildar, Block Development Officer, Mandal Revenue Officer and Gram Sabha. So who will have this authority? It is Gram Sabha will have the authority to initiate this process. So answer is Gram Sabha. Who is the chairman? Who is the chairman of the National Disaster Management Authority? And the options are Prime Minister, President, Home Minister and Defence Minister. Who is the chairman of National Disaster Management Authority? It is Prime Minister. He will be the chairman of National Disaster Management Authority. Okay. So this is the apex body. Okay. This is the apex body. Apex is nothing but the highest body for disaster management in India. So on 23rd of December 2005, the government of India enacted the Disaster Management Act, which envisages the creation of National Disaster Management Authority. So NDMA, that is National Disaster Management Authority, is a statutory body. Remember, this is very important. Okay. Statutory body established by the Government of India under Disaster Management Act 2005. So NDMA is an agency under which ministry? So under Ministry of Home Affairs. So we know National Disaster Management Authority is chaired by Prime Minister. Similarly, state, when it comes to state, state disaster management authority are headed by their respective chief ministers. Okay. State disasters management authority is headed by chief minister. Goods and service tax, okay, came into effect on. So, goods and service tax is nothing but GST. We all know this one, okay. It came into effect on 1st July 2017, 1st June 2006 and uh, 2nd October 2015, 1st April 2017. It came into effect on 1st July 2017. This date is important, okay. So, this GST is what? It is an indirect tax. Okay. We know two types of taxes the government collects. One is direct tax. Okay. And the other is indirect tax. So this GST is comes under what? Indirect tax. So income tax comes under what? Direct tax. So this after the implementation of this GST. Okay. It has replaced VAT, excise duty, service tax, central excise. Okay and other which were implemented before the GST. So it has replaced all these taxes and now we have only single GST tax. Okay. So there are three types of tax applicable under GST. Okay. What are those? We'll see. One is central goods and service tax. This we call it as CGST. So it is levied by central government. Okay. It is levied by central government on sales of intrastate intrastate these wording is very important okay so cgst is levied by central government okay on the sales of inter intra state goods and services next it is state goods and service tax that is sgst and it is levied by okay sgst is levied by state okay state government okay on the sales of intrastate goods and services next integrated integrated goods and service tax we call it as igst and it is levied by central government on sales of on sales of interstate okay on sales of interstate okay and we have four slabs under gst okay what are those one is five percentage 12 percentage 18 percentage and 28 percentage these are the flow four slabs 
and they may ask you okay by this combination like 5 10 okay which one is correct 5 12 18 or 5 12 18 and 28 okay so just remember these four slabs 5 percentage 12 percentage 18 percentage and 28 percentage so who among the following is not part of the state executive and the options are chief minister governor advocate general of the state and council of ministers state so who among them is not part of state executive it is advocate general it is advocate general he is not part of the state executive and the answer is what advocate general of the state and similarly we know we have attorney general of india okay attorney general of india we have and under article 76 okay under article 76 of the indian constitution it mentions that he or she is the highest law officer of india okay he is the highest law officer of india and write in the comment section who is the attorney general of india so who among the following holds the who among the following holds the office during the pleasure of president okay and the options are governor lok sabha speaker rajya sabha chairman vice president so among them okay governor holds the office holds the office during the pleasure of president and the answer is what governor And uh, we'll see more positions which are which hold the office during the pleasure of president are attorney general of India, civil service personnel, council of ministers, okay, and prime minister. Okay, they hold the office during the pleasure of president. One feature distinguishes the Rajya Sabha from the legislative council. The options are power of impeachment, indirect election, nomination of members and tenure of membership. So which feature distinguishes the Rajya Sabha? It is power of impeachment. Okay. Power of impeachment. The answer is power of impeachment. And we know that Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha is also known as council. Okay. Council of state or upper house of the parliament upper house of the parliament so who is the chairman of Rajya Sabha okay the current chairman is M. Venkai Naidu and who is the deputy chairman of Rajya Sabha Harivans Narayan Singh okay so the vice president is the okay so the vice president the vice president of India is the ex officio ex officio chairman okay remember this one ex officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha okay and if there is a joint sitting of the parliament if there is a joint sitting of the parliament okay and it is called by whom it is called by president okay if there is a joint sitting it is called by the called by the president when there is a deadlock okay so it is called by the president but it is presided by whom it is presided by speaker okay it is presided by speaker and in his absence it is deputy speaker okay deputy speaker and in his absence then deputy chairman then deputy chairman will preside the joint meeting joint meeting joint meeting so i hope if you like this video please subscribe to concepts of all the best